So this is the piece we've cut out of the deck. It's a drain hole in the side of the boat. It's made of on same the, on the top deck. On the top deck, yeah. yeah. So the water sort of flows down the walkway and flows off the side. Um, but it's, <clears throat> it's stainless steel and it's suffered some galvanic corrosion. It's all just disintegrated. Um, so we decided to replace it. Here is a new piece. <laughs> Problem is, we've got to bend it. We've got to bend it with the right radiuses to match this piece because I don't want to cut it and weld it. It'd be better if we bent it. So we're having to fabricate up a round bar bender with a bit of channel and some flat bar. I'm going to make up some posts and a rotating tongue and hopefully it should be pretty easy. Old? New. Just need to shorten her up a bit. Sick. Yeah. It works so well. slot it in there and... Yeah. Give you a demo. Took two of us to do it though, won't lie. <laughs> That's pretty fucking solid stuff. So yeah, this is the new bash bar of the boat. Um, we've, gee, we've nearly finished installing it. Yesterday we were just completing sort of the larger runs of welds, uh, putting the end cap piece on at this end. Uh, we had to go source that end cap from a different supplier just to, just to tie it all together. Um, we had Kingdom, our friend down here was helping us with some, sort of the larger runs. He's a boiler maker, he's done a really good job sort of showing us the technique of how to bend these tubes around the corner of the boat by cutting all these notches into the into the side um, along the areas that need to have the profile, which makes it malleable enough that you can sort of do it by hand and then tack as you go along. It's actually come up really nice. We just need to spend today grinding all of the toes of the world off, cleaning it up, and then obviously we'll replace this inside uh, kick rail that's a uh, part of the edge of the boat and then we should be ready for blasting and painting one of the last things we'll need to do here is uh, weld in the stainless steel handrail to the side of the boat um, it's a bit of a different method we don't TIG weld we just use stick we've got special stick rods that can handle uh, the stainless steel to steel so I'll finish that up today give that a hit with the grinder make it all look nice and pretty and then yeah it's all coming together what I think nice all right, so these are our new hatch collars. Um, you can see here where we've cut out the old hatches. Uh, they were terrible. They, were, they weren't they radius like these ones. Um, they were set in stainless steel, which gives you that um, electrolysis issue that we have. We had four up front and one at the back, and we've cut them all out and resheated the deck and standardized the size of the hatches across the boat and we've also centralized the areas which the hatches are going to be for the inside you can see we've, we've completely changed it so the, these original hatch collars used to sit about an inch maybe an inch and a half off the deck and you used to catch your toes on them they were annoying to walk around they just look they look terrible all the square edges was terrible what we've decided to go with um, shout out to Mark Rebilliard and Dan Rebilliard, the boys from the workshop. They fabbed up these um, radius collars and we had them all pre-drilled, pre-cut, pre-welded and they're, they're actually mint. They sit perfectly inside the, uh, the ceiling of the boat and all of the strengtheners and stiffeners of the boat are all running in and are welded to the internal lip of the collar. I don't know if you can see that, Saki, but um, the actual collar is about 100 mil sitting inside this can attach into the side of that collar these are the new lumar hatches so as jack previously explained we've um we've increased the size of all our hatches to um to take take this larger size this is going to increase the light in the boat um new lumar hatches they're lockable the old ones are about 20 years old and falling to pieces so it's going to be nice having these new new hatches on on the boat um, shout out to Hamish Brooksmith for um, sorting these out for us. Absolute, absolute legend. Cheers, lad. So at the same time that we were getting rid of all the original hatches and repairing the electrolysis damage from those, we had originally we had a um, a stainless steel handrail, which I don't know if you can see it. Probably started about there, came out here around the mast as a 
sort of push pull pit to sit in, maybe when you were handling the ropes of the mast. Problem was, that was made of stainless steel as well, and everywhere where it had joined to the deck was completely rotten. So we've decided to can it. We re-welded the deck back together, and what we're planning on doing is putting a storage locker. We might have a handrail at the back, but its main purpose would just be to house wet gear, wetsuits, kite equipment, anything of that nature, and double as sort of a, a seat at the front of the boat. And that's gonna go sort of in the location where, the, where that frame was. So what we've got here is um, the entire side of the boat was uh, damaged with rust, pinholes, as you've probably seen from previous photos and videos. Um, we coated it with um, probably three coats of Intershield uh, 300. It's a, um, a metal, metal self-priming protective coating. After that, we sanded it all back, washed the boat down with, um, with fresh water because we're so close to the ocean. You get a buildup of salt and contaminants on the on the on the hull. You need to continuously wash it before every coat and and sand it to tear it up. We've gone through, feathered all the edges of all the spots that we've um, we've blasted and painted. It's pretty hard to see that now, but when we feather the edges, we take take the fairing coat and we just smooth that edge off so there's no sharp sharp edge between the steel and the and the existing feathering feather coat. And then we prime the whole side of the hull with um, with an international product 820. So it's a primer for um, the fairing coat that we're going to apply apply in the hull to build that level up. So this is a perfect example of what we've done over the whole whole boat. So we've blasted back through the existing fairing coat. We've blasted back to steel. So as you can see, we've gone around with um, sanders, 40 grit sandpaper, 80 grit sandpaper sanded it all back and then smoothed it off with with um, with 120. Um, we have to get this smooth this edge off and increase the surface area of where we're applying the fairing coat so you don't have um, lines of lo lines and imperfections in your fairing coat when you reapply it because if you if you leave sharp edges they will show through your gloss finish on your paint. This is the um, pitting from the electrolysis and corrosion that we've got on the boat. This is the reason why we've had to do such an extensive coating coating on the boat. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply an epoxy fairing coat over the 820 to smoothen out all of these, all of this pitting and get the boat back to brand new. This is the dream team. <laughs> so <laughs> Two most practical people they've got on the yacht. So Hilsinger, maybe run through exactly what we're doing mate. Give us an explanation. Uh, yeah. So Nico, he's got a lot of dust because the boy's been pretty busy. Oh, a bit dusty he's is it? He's been sanding the sand boys. <laughs> so Nick is wiping all the dust off. And then I'm coming over with some real healthy thinner. It's kind of it a good drink good. as well. Yeah, it's yep. good for you. And then just cleaning, prepping it for some fairing. Whoa. There's gonna be some fairing action with the with the boys today. So Sounds fair enough. It is fair enough. It's fair dinking, some say. <laughs>
and for fairing. So we've put it on over the fairing coat to consolidate all the fairing that we've done um, so that the uh, weather doesn't get to it and uh, to protect it. And then we can sand that down and then we can put our top coats over the top of that. Dad has just coved all of our um, these bars here, and every everything that was done needs to be hand sanded. Put the angles and everything like that. So we're just putting the profile back in and sanding all off all the excess fog, and this is what it looks like. Brand new. Nothing. So I've just got the um, top gunnel of the boat behind me here. This first layer of fog on the top here has just been applied really proud um, and thick and heavy because we'd sandblasted all of the um, little defects out of the top gunnel of the boat and um, to get that, to fill that, we'd really have to overfill it proud and then sand it back and blend all the edges in again. So this isn't quite ready yet, having only been put on last night, but we'll, um, yeah, we'll give that another day and then we'll sand all of that back and hopefully it'll, get, it'll be looking like the other side is, which I'll show you now. The hours and hours of sanding that have gone on this thing is just incredible. So <laughs> wherever you can see pink fog behind us, on this side, it's typically the third coat, which means the whole boat, 60 foot yacht, has basically been covered in pink stuff three times, sanded back and every little imperfection and edge blended three times just to get it to the stage that it's ready to put on a um, coat of primer before the final top coats of paint. Um, it's not quite finished yet. Um, here, this is the final finish. There's, when you run your fingers over that, there's no edges, that's smooth, there's no imperfections in that. But you can see that above it, there's still one final pull of bog. We'll get that done in the next couple of days and then um, a few spots like that and on the top gunnels and those sorts of things and then hopefully um, we'll be painting in a week or so. Happy days. Down at the yacht, uh, been a pretty big morning and all day and the sun's about to sort of dip now so it's probably about 4.30 or 5 o'clock. Just locking in for another night session with Pete, Mick and Brody and we are applying, well we've been sanding all day and prepping and getting rid of old tape and all of the ugly stuff and sealant and that sort of thing, getting it nice and um, ready for us to apply some bog and then paint over that. So what we've been using to fair the boat is a structural bog from International. It's called um, All Fair. This is a, what we've been doing is mixing part A and part B. It's one to one, very easy to use. You just mix it into all the two different colours. Um, mix out, it comes a, a solid pink. So we're using this, it's um, very easy to use. It doesn't go off very quick. A lot of the bogs out there um, harden very quick and become very hard to use. This stays malleable and, and workable for about half an hour to an hour before before you, you, you know, you stop using it. This is what we did last night. We've applied all of the um, all fair on. What you can see here is um, as you apply this product, it actually, um, it's recommended to apply it proud. It shrinks back a lot. So as you can see here, we've applied all of this proud on all of our our lumps expecting it to shrink back as it cures. Once it's cured, we'll sand out the high spots. What we're trying to achieve around all of our poles is we're building up the product slightly, slightly high. Um, that is to cause 
the runoff away from our poles, we found that the stainless steel um, welded to the mild steel boat was a problem area. If you get any moisture in that area, it causes it um, corrosion. This is the, uh, a masterpiece from Fairing Lord uh, Mick. He's been staying late, doing crazy hours with us. Um, what he's done, this has taken a lot of product to get this right. It was a bit of a problem area. It was where we had severe corrosion between the double plates at the front that we had to completely and reshape this area. So um, we've added additional stiffness in the bottom to strengthen it up, welded it all, and now we're just reshaping it, reshaping the fall back towards the um, back towards the deck here. After we spent the whole weekend applying fresh bog to the top deck, which we were pretty chuffed about, uh, a squall blew through yesterday evening which um, stopped us painting it and um, yeah basically means that now we've got to blow down all of the water and just assess the damage and hope our bog hasn't been damaged so fingers crossed. That's actually not too bad. The, um, the deck, the boat's in, sitting on a bit of an angle, so this is just a natural spot where water falls. So I'm gonna try up that section, but I think we might have actually gotten away with it. it looks like it was just a light shower. It wasn't too bad, and um, it's, it's basically all run off and dried overnight. So that is a relief. I thought I'd explain what um, tools we're using to do all of the sanding, seeing as we've been sanding for about five months. It kind of looks like you're going to do a choose your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not much choice here because there's two of us down here and we've got two tools. So one's on one and one's on the other. But for the finer stuff, well actually let's start first step. I'm standing on a really big thick patch. And for the big stuff, you want this bad boy. It's electric. We've got a big 40 grip hat on it and it just rips through it. Um, you've got to be quite careful though because you can take too much off and go down to steel pretty quickly. But this is the uh, weapon of choice for getting through the uh, big thick bog. And then once you get a bit closer... Not for novices that tool. Not for novices that tool. It's quite hard to use. Kicks like a mule. But <laughs> this is, and we've had a couple of these, but this is just a little air-powered um, orbital sander, so it's got a Velcro pad and discs. Um, we're running 120 grit, and once we get uh, closer, this just plugs into an air hose, and um, this is really good for doing the fine detailing. You can also sort of curve up the walls a bit, get into some of the tricky spots, Ooh. get all the ridges out, and then when you're coming down and doing um, your edges where you really need to blend it in and make sure you've got no ridges, um, this is the tool of choice. Also, um, you can turn it up and down. So, tip we picked up from Pete and Mick is that when you're doing the um, hard edges, for example, there's a step where it's got a really hard edge. You sand it this way, you sand it that way, but you're left with a really sharp edge. It's too sharp for paint to um, stick to and also probably take some bark off your shins if you walk into it. So, you turn this right down and you can roll the edges as well and get a nice smooth finish. Ooh, so. techniques. What have you done, Brody? I've just mixed the mother load of all mother load of bogs. <laughs> it is too <laughs> much bog. I can't even mix it. It's freezing cold, so it's it's gone like solid. And yeah, I'm struggling. Been mixing it for about 20 minutes now. I'm still not done. Oh my god. <laughs> the real question, Jackie Lamb, is <laughs> what do you think? Seeing Cape Trail for the first time. I like that you asked me the tough questions. <laughs> Look, it, looked, it looked amazing in the daytime, that's for sure. Now it's night time. Probably a bad time to pull the camera yeah, out. It's very hard for me to uh, <laughs> at the moment, but when the light's on it, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, the boy's done a great job. As you look down the lines, one thing that you notice is there are there's minimal waves, minimal differences. The, the coving is to a very high quality. And I've just got this image of us rolling into marinas and, and heads snapping so fast that there's neck injuries when we come past because of how crystal clear this paint job's going to be.
Whew, that's better, why we've got a lawyer on board. Well, we better upgrade that rigging so we can get public liability insurance, boys. But now we're talking. Look <laughs> <laughs> into the boat, and Brody has the cheekiest grin on his face. And I look over, and there's smoke coming out of the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> What have you done? I'm just probably I'm just creating the perfect microclimate so we can just, you know, paint, get rid of all the moisture and frothing. Oh, it's the burning. <laughs> it's the it is so smoky. Fuck. Ah. Try the bone. How you doing? <laughs> it is 12.30 on a school night and um, yeah. Haven't started painting yet. And we haven't even started painting. It's been two weeks of working every day, every night to get this ready. Mix painting it. 45 minutes? Yeah.